You're using Ableton wrong. Sorry, what? Bro, you're using Ableton wrong. Right. I use Ableton as part of my live looping Twitch stream, which is based on the Elise Tro hands-free live looping method. This basically plans out the live looping that I'm going to do in a song, and then allows me to perform the instruments without pressing foot pedals or buttons or anything like that. This requires the use of the arrangement view. This was a serious issue for this guy. So today we're going to talk through the different views in Ableton Live and how you can use them to streamline and improve your musical flow. Let's go! Session view looks like this. It has one track per instrument and is laid out like a mixing desk, so the tracks are vertical. It was originally designed as a tool for DJs to mix and match samples and loops on the fly. It's pretty intuitive and you can start making some great music off the bat with little experience in music tech. This is the arrangement view. It was designed to mimic the traditional linear workflow of a multi-track tape recorder, and you can see that all of the tracks are horizontal. Most DAWs, such as Cubase, Logic, and Pro Tools, are set up in this way. A lot of recording engineers producers, like me, have grown up using this view and feel more comfortable using this to produce music. So let's go back to the conversation. So, why do you think I'm using Ableton wrong? Ableton should only be used with the session view. I mean, this is what sets them apart from other DAWs. And if you use the arrangement view, you might as well go back to using Cubase or Logic. So let's pause there. He's got a point. The session view in Ableton is amazing. It's flexible, allowing you to create music in a much more flexible and organic way, leaning heavily on improvisational music techniques and looping. I think it's fair to say that the session view of Ableton has changed how many people approach making music. So check this out. I've got drums, bass, and keys here, plus I've got this guitar part. Look how easy it is to audition drum ideas to this guitar part. about one or two minutes to record these ideas and I can audition them quickly and easily. This workflow is insane. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Look at the same tracks in arrangement view. Look how much harder it is to move things around to try and audition things on the fly. Okay, I want to try the rhythmic drum part now. Let's just move these out of the way. It's taken ages. Move that there, and I can stretch this, and I can actually um, do that. Okay, no props. Okay, that sounds good. I'm going to try the weird drum part now. Okay, so you get the point. There are actually better ways of doing this and you might be able to find quicker ways of auditioning in arrangement view, but I hope you've noticed how much easier, faster and intuitive it is in the session view. I wanna show you now how easy it is to play a live song in session view. Notice these bus buttons over here, they trigger all the clips in that horizontal row. So I can play this first section. <laughs> When I'm ready, I press, press the next one down here. Or this one. So all of these horizontal rows are called scenes. So in session view, you can trigger individual clips or you can trigger scenes with this button over here. Fantastic. So this means you can build a brilliant live performance, which is really easy to deliver. So the benefits of the session view allows for a more flexible and experimental workflow. It's good for live performance and improvisation, and it makes it easy to try out different ideas and arrangements quickly. So I use it loads in songwriting. So I'm right. 
The session view is way better. Wait. I agree that the session view is amazing, but let me ask you a question. What happens when you want to do a mix down of your track? Well, I just use a session view and play it live. Okay. What about longer sections of audio, like an entire verse on the vocals, or a longer guitar part like a solo? Um, so here's the problem with session view. At a certain point, you want to finalize your music and commit to an arrangement. One of the secrets of recording and mixing is committing. For example, converting a MIDI part to an audio part so you can't edit the notes or try new things out. Session view is so organic and so improvisational, nothing is committed. And this will mean you never finish your project. Also, recording longer, non-looped parts is way easier than the arrangement view. So the benefits of the arrangement view are it allows for a traditional linear workflow similar to a multi-track tape machine. It's good for creating a final arrangement and mix of a song. And it makes it easy to see the structure and arrangement of a song at a glance. All right, I'll admit it. I was probably being a bit simplistic earlier. The arrangement view is useful. Thanks for saying that. Can I get a like on the video? Yeah, all right. And can you ask the viewers to do the same, please? Okay. If you got value out of this video, please consider hitting the like button. Is that all right? Can I go now? Right, now he's gone. Do you want my super mega tip? Use both the session and the arrangement view. This is how I use Ableton. Gather ideas in the session view, where the experimental and improvisational workflow is fast and intuitive. Then use something called session record. When I've got all my ideas laid out in session view, Session Record allows you to play the clips and scenes like a performance and captures the exact timings in the arrangement view. This is a great tool in Ableton. It means you get all the advantages of the session view and all the advantages of the arrangement view. I feel this is a great way of moving your music forward. If you're interested in knowing more about how I use Ableton, why not check out my video here where I discuss the amazing piece of software called Bohm MIDI Translator, which will allow you to massively streamline and speed up your workflow.